Slam Wrestling Report Volume 2 or Episode 2, whatever you want to call it. I'm coming to you live through Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. And going straight to my channel, which is Ultima One, Ultima One Wrestling News. You guys can see me there also. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about all the stuff that happened over the week with WWE Review on the Raw segment on the SmackDown segment uh, what's going on with Impact what's going on with AEW um, Major League Wrestling New Japan we're gonna cover everything so let me start off right away we're gonna talk about what happened Monday night Monday night's Raw started off awful and I'm gonna say it real it was started off awful they started off with talking about the WWE title and it's ex existing of 50 years and how great all the champions been Bruno Hogan all that then all of a sudden they turn it around and start talking about the 24-7 title. My opinion on that, that title is garbage. Because that's just for a bunch of wrestlers who stays in catering, they're not, not on TV, to run around the whole arena, all over the back locker room to chase after our truth to win the belt. But anyway, the, the show started off with a 24-7 title match. And the funny part about it is that all the wrestlers were around the ring and usually when you see wrestlers around the ring, it's a lumberjack match, right? No. They say, oh, the 24-7 rule is not an effect. It's a 24-7 title match. It was uh, Carmella and our uh, truth against Maverick and his wife. Uh, I don't know her name. Don't care. Won't bother. But anyway, so that match started off. At the end, truth and Carmella won. Then all of a sudden, all the wrestlers just go into the top of the ring apron. And the first person who went and rolled up um, uh, our truth was Michael Canelli, and all the wrestlers uh, jump on top of him. And it was a three count. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Canelli comes out being a 24 7 champion. And you guys who saw the Raw, you know what happened afterwards. He laid down for Maria Canelli to pin him. Totally stupidity. It is, it's ridiculous. But that's what happened on Raw. That's, and I, to me, honestly, it was horrible, but the one thing that I enjoyed of Raw was the gauntlet match. A lot of people didn't like it. I liked the Cesaro versus Rey Mysterio. That was a great match. Uh, even though they went into commercials, but I find it kind of weird that in the match, there was a commercial, but they say, oh, no, they stopped the match, and then they went to commercial. Listen, I don't care about that. All I know is that the 24th, I mean, the gauntlet match was pretty good between um, Mysterio and um, Cesaro. Uh, Mysterio ended up pinning him, but here's another part in that in that um, gauntlet. Sami Zayn, they are burying this guy. Sami Zayn went into the ring to fight Mysterio or to wrestle Mysterio, and he got pinned with a minute, probably a minute, if that's like 32 seconds, he got pinned. They're wasting talent, and this is a problem for me for WWE. They keep wasting talent. And they're signing all these guys, but they're not using them properly. So. Um, also, something that caught my eye was the the original club, the OCs, became WWE Tag Champions. Um, my thoughts on that was, hey, I guess because they signed the five-year deal, that's the reward. You get the tag team titles. You know, they said that AJ batted for them, for um, for them to actually win the tag team champions, and that was part of the, what the whole club got back together. And most likely, right now, as far as the club is concerned, the original club, the only club that matters, um, you know, according to the WWE, um, supposedly, um, I, I could see Finn Balor joining them somewhere after SummerSlam, the original club, the only club. And who are the members? Come on, the four main guys that were part of Bullet Club. But them using the original club is stupid. The only club that is original is Bullet Club in Japan. That's my thing. So... You know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. But something that really int that was interesting that I found out, uh, and it was an interview that they had with Six um, uh, six Pack, or whatever his name is, um, you know, um, Six um, X-Pac. That's what I'm talking about, X-Pac. He claimed that during the reunion, that the plan was for the OCs to get buried. And the part went on AJ Styles for Seth Rollins. It was supposed to uh, the DX and the NWO, the Click, whatever you want to call it, they got together. They were supposed to beat them down and make them look bad, whatever. And apparently, 
X Pac and the rest of the clique said, no, we're not doing that. We're not gonna bury them. Why would you bury them? Which I don't I don't blame them because hey, if you think about it, the clique NWO DX came from that with the founding fathers of you could say from the Bullet Club. Because if it was not them, there would not be a Bullet Club. So McMahon again, his old ass, again, trying to do things that he's not supposed to be doing. It, it, the guy, he's out of touch. So it's ridiculous. But um, so that was his thing. He wanted, they wanted to bury him. And luckily, that Triple H, Kevin Nash, uh, Scott Hall, whatever it was, they said, nope, it's not going to happen. We're not doing it. And so they changed it the way it was supposed to. So um, also, one thing that came out of uh, that I noticed last week too, Trish, um, Trish Stratus, um, we're going to go now to SmackDown. Uh, Trish Stratus is going to be involved against Charlotte at SummerSlam, which is pretty good. That's a great, uh, 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 good, um, uh, something I'm looking forward to. Old school against new school. Um, Trish Stratus is a Hall of Famer. That's going to be something to see she still has it. So that one, I, you know, I'm not really too happy with the WWE product right now, the way it's been going, but, you know. Um, but anyway, let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown. Um, there was uh, the, the opening was Kevin Owens having his promo talking about how McMahon's not in the building, whatever, blah blah blah. McIntyre challenged Owens. That match was good, pretty good. Um, but it looks like um, again Kevin Owens, they're pushing him. Owens pinned McIntyre, and McIntyre. I feel McIntyre should have been pushed for the world title a long, long time ago. But they're not doing it. They're not doing it. I don't understand why they're not doing it. Um, but uh, Kevin Owens wins, so they're pushing him um, quick, you know, to, to, I guess he's going to be the one who's going to end up being Shane McMahon um, in SummerSlam, so then they get rid of Shane McMahon out of TV, and that's the way it's going to happen, because I think it's a I quit match, or I quit that federation, I don't know what it is, but I know it's, that's, uh, I could see that, I could see uh, Owens being McMahon at SummerSlam. Uh, another interesting thing that I'm um, just it's up to me I think I'm fed up with this woman wrestler and it's Alexa Bliss every time I like, turn around Alexa Bliss um, is getting a title match so this week she was in a tag team match with um, uh, Nikki Cross and it was Amber Moon versus uh, I mean Amber Moon teaming up with Bailey against Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross and the ending of that match Alexa pinned pin, um, Amber Moon and I'm saying to myself, okay, so now is this another setup to get her to give her another title match? Because this woman is getting title matches and she's not putting another. Alexa Bliss is garbage. To me, Alexa Bliss is garbage. Major garbage. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So, um, so it looks like she may be getting another title shot. Let me be surprised. Um, so that means Zane challenged Alistair Black for, uh, Alistair Black for SummerSlam. Um, then uh, Dolph Ziggler the situation with Dolph Ziggler I'm saying to myself why is he still on TV now the word around is he's going to fight Goldberg because oh Matt Riddle spilled the beans that's another jerk I can't stand Matt Riddle he's just a total jerk he does, doesn't deserve anything this guy should they should suspend his ass from giving out the, the match that everybody was trying to hide which was Goldberg versus Ziggler I honestly don't want to see Goldberg. After what happened at the Super Showdown, he shouldn't even be wrestling at all. But he's gonna fight Ziggler, and um, I guess because Ziggler needs to be on TV. Ziggler's another one that I don't know why they're still giving him all this time. Um, uh, Mustafa Ali, I saw that he pinned uh, Nakamura, and it's about time that uh, Mustafa Ali gets uh, his credit. This guy's a great wrestler. I mean, to me, his skills are great. Um, they're not pushing. They had him in the doing promos in the back. Don't understand why. I don't understand it at all. Why? But um, so he actually pinned Nakamura, so he'll probably end up getting a title shot at SummerSlam with Nakamura, which is is going to be a great match. Um, I don't think he will pin Nakamura um, at the SummerSlam. Maybe later down the line they'll probably give him the belt, but I don't see him beating. Um, Nakamura on that. Also, um, Kofi Kingston, you're the world champion. Why are you still throwing pancakes around? Why? 
I don't understand it. Why are you throwing pancakes? You've got a bunch of pancakes around the belt. This is what I'm talking about. WWE does not respect the actual fan like myself, a WWE fan. They don't respect you guys, WWE fan. They don't. They don't respect y'all. They don't care. They got this guy throwing pancakes all over the place. You know, and Kofi Kingston, I was happy he won the title, but I thought he was going to get away from that gimmick. It seems now that's not happening. And we know I'm happy that New Day and, and Kofi got the belts. And they deserve it, but get rid of the pancakes thing. This is ridiculous. Also, I heard that the wild card rule is going to go away quietly. So, little by little, you're going to see that the wild card is no longer going to be around. It's not doing nothing. The day TV rating dropped this week after hitting almost a three last week with the reunion. The TV rating dropped. Nobody's going to watch this. The only reason people were watching it was because they saw a Stone Cold. They saw, uh, I believe, uh, all the old guys. I don't remember. who Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. They saw all the old guys, Mark Henry. That's the only reason people watched it. Because they're like, oh, I remember this guy. I remember this guy. That's the only reason they watched it. The only reason they watched it. But, um, yeah, so so that's pretty much it on as far as WWE. Um so it looks like Charlotte Flair will be um, wrestling um, Trish Stratus for the, I think, um, I, guess that, I forgot there's no titles involved. I'm so used and used to have seen Charlotte with the bell all the time. So I messed up when I say what title shot. There is no title shot. It's one on one. It's in Toronto. Most likely Trish Stratus will pin Charlotte Flair. I don't see Charlotte Flair beating Trish Stratus in Toronto, in her home place. So. And the one thing, another thing before I get off the subject of WWE, WWE needs to stop living off the glory days. The glory days are over. Build somebody. Create a new wrestler. Because everybody you have, they're already guys who already been made, uh, made a name for themselves outside of WWE. It's time to create somebody. Y'all guys have not created a wrestler, so I believe since John Cena. It's been over what? 17 years? Come on. Get it together. So... Let's talk about Impact. Impact knew that Rob Van Dam was going to be at the reunion. So they had no problem with that. So uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll have some type of working relationship with WWE. I mean, Impact tonight is unbreakable. Um, so that's, that's going to be interesting. Speaking of unbreakable, remember tonight and unbreakable is um, Sammy Callahan versus Tessa Blanchard Part 2. Now. Here's one interesting story that could happen. Uh, Tennille Dash was signed with Impact. And that right now, as far as TNA, they uh, Impact, they women wrestling right now is one of, I say one of the best right now. Bef I can't compare with AEW because AEW has not even started. But right now, between WWE, Ring of Honor, Impact has the best wrestling right now when it comes to the ladies. I mean, they have... Uh, Valkyrie who's the champion you got uh, 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 men whatever her name is uh, Jessica Havoc um, Rosemary uh, and now them adding to uh, Tessa Blanchard because Tessa Blanchard to me is the number one woman wrestling in the world right now and anybody can argue with me whatever maybe Tony Storm in the UK but we're talking about here in the States I think Tessa Blanchard and Tony Storm match would be great but right now Tessa Blanchard is the woman now you add to, uh, to Neil Dashwood, who, in case you guys, WWE fans don't remember, that used to be Emma. So she's now uh, with um, Impact, which is great for them. But um, but them adding to Neil Dashwood, they end up losing Congo Khan, who now he's done with Impact. I mean, many of you guys don't remember this guy, but this guy's a big dude, look like a Samoan, big afro, paints his face. I saw him wrestle a couple of times, I didn't really follow him, but... He's done with Impact. And speaking about Impact also, um, Axis Channel are no longer dealing with Impact because apparently Axis Channel was doing some type of negotiation with um, with, um, with Impact for, to put them in the, in the network. Because remember, Impact right now is in, the, I forgot the channel, Pursuit Channel. Now, a lot of people don't have that channel unless you're on Twitch and you can see it live. They, so they're trying to negotiate with Access um, Access Channel to put put they they um, shows on um, and on Access Impact um, with the home where New Japan Pro Wrestling um, they show those they show there. So I, I 
I don't know what happened. Apparently, they say that um, um, the company that owns um, um, Impact was supposed to buy Access Channel, and something didn't go right. So now it looks like it, the deal is off, but they're still talking. You know, I don't. I, it's just a mess right now. So it would be nice though to have Impact Access Channel because I get to see them. Everybody gets to see them instead of them being a pursuit channel. Who who, who has that? Somebody please tell me who has that because I don't have it. I don't have that channel. So, so that's um, impact. Now let's talk about AEW. AEW, as you guys know, October second they'll start at TNT. Um, and Cody Rose responded back to Vince McMahon about Vince McMahon said he doesn't know how TNT is going to deal with the bloody and gore stuff that AEW is bringing to the mix. And as you well know, Tony Khan made it clear there won't be no blood in TNT for TNT debut or any of their shows on TV, only in pay-per-views, only on pay-per-views. But of course, with the man being a jerk-off and it talking nonsense, the man claimed there's no competition, AEW's no competition, but now um, it looks like he is worried about AEW and talking about, how, you don't know how TNT is going to deal with them, but Cody Rhodes said, you know what, yeah, you write bloody and guts, you take blood and guts to be where they are right now. They're about to pin me October 2nd, which, you know, I'm really looking forward to this because I've been tired for the last 18 years just watching WWE with the garbage, and I just can't stand it, cannot wait for AEW to come. But, you know, that's something to look forward to. But, um, um, Cody Rose also mentioned something about he thinks CM Punk may go back to WWE, which I think is just a ploy. It just, just, Stirring up the pot, so you know, because you all know that CM Punk is supposed to go to AEW's um Starcast 3. Um, even though they say no, it's not AEW, but Starcast is affiliated with AEW some way, somehow, because it's going to be in Chicago. So, most likely, I won't be surprised CM Punk shows up at, 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 at All Out. That'd be great, bro. I will be happy about that to see that happen. So, Cody Rose. You know, responded to what McMahon said and also said that he thinks CM Punk might go back to WWE. I don't see it happening, but I think they're just stirring up the pot. Uh, but Cody on October 2nd on the premiere of the TNT debut of AEW, Cody's supposed to fight Sammy Guevara and they have another match. Uh, I believe uh, Chris Jericho had mentioned that he's going to bring two surprise tag team partners to wrestle the elite. On October 2nd. Also mentioned there will be a, a, a crowning of a woman's champion on October 2nd. A lot of stuff. This is stuff that I'm looking forward to. Also, uh, Marco Stunt signed with, uh, with AEW. I thought he already signed. That guy's a little guy. He looks like a little kid, but he's he's pretty good. Uh, I like the, his whole thing. Uh, so, you know, things to look forward to for AEW and I just want something different. I just, you know, I, I watch Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has been stale. I watch Impact. Impact just looks like it's, you know, keep losing wrestlers, but they're trying. And that's the thing. You try to put the best product you can, you know, and with Brian Cage as the world champion, it's pretty good. Also, I think uh, Jason Chris beat, um, Jason Chris beat uh, Rich Swan for the X Division champion. I think uh, it was last weekend. So now Jake, um, uh, Chris is the champion. Um, he's part of the OVE. Uh, uh, so he has the belt right now, as, as we see. So now let's talk about Ring of Honor. Now, Ring of Honor, as you know, within the year, they have gone down. Uh, Ring of Honor right now, they're going to have Global Wars, and I believe it's going to be in September. And Global Wars usually has New Japan in it. This year, it's not happening. Now, the question is, is it because New Japan is doing something else during that week? Because they're not in the, in the in Global Wars for the three, I think one is in Chicago, one in, maybe in Massachusetts, I'm not sure. But there's three events coming up with Global Wars and no New Japan stars are going to be in there. Instead, CMML stars are going to be in the shows when that I think it's only one show or two shows so they're gonna be in it so it goes to show you that Ring of Honor from where they were when the elite was in Ring of Honor and how 
are great, New Japan, and Ring of Honor were working together. They were going back. Them losing the elite, or the, not New Japan, because New Japan has always been great. They got the stars. But Ring of Honor losing the elite, the whole seven guys that left, has been hurting them. As you well know, the NWA walked, is no longer working relationships with Ring of Honor. And now, you know, what, what, what Ring of Honor is going to do? I mean, in NWA, I don't care about NWA, because NWA is run by Billy Corgan, and I think they do one show every other month. But what happened between NWA and Ring of Honor? They're now all of a sudden, they're not working together. They're not. So it's crazy. It's really crazy. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Ring, uh, Ring of Honor right now. I mean, Global Wars is coming up, and um, I want to see how, what final battle is going to look like. Because, yeah, you got um, Matt Taven as your world champion. You have uh, Shane Taylor as your Ring of Honor TV champion. I think the tag team champions is uh, the Briscoe brothers. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm, I want to see how it's going to look next week, next you know, next Friday with Summer Spectacular. Now, uh, they're going to have, um, I think, the Gorilla Destinies and the Briscoes are going to wrestle in the in uh ladder wars and then at the Matt Taven versus um um Alex Shelley. Uh, I, I don't see Alex Shelley winning that match so uh, but still I mean it's not something that's getting promoted deep with Summer Spectacular but see that Summer Spectacular they had New Japan wrestlers in that event. So in Toronto it's in Toronto. So now my question is what's gonna happen? But Major League Wrestling, which I don't really talk about in, in my in my YouTube channel, but Major League Wrestling just assigned a former Spirit Squad, Kenny uh, Doing and Mondo. Um, they signed with Major League Wrestling. Uh, I still want to start looking at that show because I, I, I keep hearing a lot of noise from there, from them uh, in Major League Wrestling. I want to check that out, but, but anyway. But it's something to look forward to. Um, don't sleep on Major League Wrestling. They, I've seen matches of it. The matches are pretty good. Um, let's go to the G1 Climax. I mean, I'm just going to bring something up real quick. Uh, Okada is still undefeated in his block. And he beat Kenta last uh, last Saturday. Um, so now Kenta's behind him, I think, in second place. But Okada undefeated. Same thing with Moxley. Moxley was undefeated in the B block until he lost to Yano. Not by pin, but by Kana. New Japan is a very smart, uh, very smart uh, promotion because, see, uh, you got the United States champion, Moxley. So he loses to Yano, and Yano is a tricky guy, a guy who does a lot of tricks. He'll try to hit you below the belt or try to get you counted out. He'll take out the buckle from one corner, smack you in the head with it. But you see how they did it. They didn't have Yano pin the champion. The U.S. champion, the U.S. IWGP champion. Okay, and what it did was, hey, we want Moxley to lose his first match. Get him kind of. If he would have been WWE, they don't do that. See the difference. See the difference. So Moxley loses his first match, but not by pin. He lost by kind of. But he's still the lead in the B block. Uh, I also saw, I think, um, during the week, also um, Lance Archer versus Okada. That match was great. Um, but Archer is showing his true self. This guy is a big monster. And he was part of the Killer Lee squad with David Boy Smith Jr. But like I said, David Boy Smith Jr. left to go wrestle Major League Wrestling. And, you know. But overall, I mean, it's something to look forward to. Tonight, again, that's going to be Unbreakable on, I believe, it probably already started. Um, Unbreakable tonight. Uh, you should check that out. It's coming from California. So, pretty much, this is going to end. Uh, in the live broadcast on my Chokeslam Wrestling Report and the live report coming from, to my YouTube channel for Ultimate One Wrestling News. So, but before I leave, I just want to say a legend passed away yesterday. A guy who I saw when I was eight years old, and I'm 49 right now. I saw this guy the first time in the WWF TV they used to give us on. Uh, Saturday night and I saw this guy and he brought his belt and I was like who's this guy this guy's not what that belt is it and I'm talking about the great Harley race 
Um, Harley Race passed away yesterday at the age of 76. Um, according to information, he had lung cancer. They say it wasn't bad. It wasn't um, not in a low stage, but they say he died of, of, of cancer, uh, lung cancer. Harley Race was one of the guys that I could say that I saw him wrestle. I, 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 he was a uh, a villain. He wrestled most of the time as a villain, and he was. I remember the Dusty Road matches he had, the uh, Stargate 1983 between him and Ric Flair. I remember when he beat Flair in the summer of 83. I was like, oh my God, you got to be kidding. And Flair, I, I was just learning uh, a lot of these wrestlers um, at that time because that's I, at that time was when I first bought my first wrestling magazine and I was reading uh, about guys outside of WWE, you know, WWF at that time. And um, Harley Ridge was one of the first guys, him and Nick Bowenkle was one of the guys that I actually got to see wrestle. And um, Harley Race was one of the first guys that I saw that was an outsider from WWF. And I think he, he wrestled Bob Backlund. And a lot of people don't know this either. He beat Bob Backlund in 1978 in Japan. WWF or WWE doesn't mention that today. He beat Bob Backlund. So Bob Backlund had three title reigns, not two, three. He lost to Harley Race, 1978, and he ended up, um, he ended up, um, I believe he ended up beating um, Harley Race like two or three days later and brought the belt back. So, but Harley Race was one of the top guys in Japan. Japan is known to bully wrestlers, outside of wrestlers from the United States, not Harley Race. Harley Race was a man's man, and uh, I read story. This guy will not take no crap from nobody. And Harley Race was a great manager, too. He he would manage Big Van Vader for for close to probably three or four years. He took Big Van Vader to two world title reigns, and him and Vader were like inseparable. Like that's, but I'm going to miss Holly Race because Holly Race was one of the guys that I can say he had one of the one of childhood legends that I saw as I grew up and as I got accustomed to watching wrestling every week and and all that stuff. And um, so it's sad to say I always. His family and everybody else the best and um, my condolences to the family but this will end my show and I could tell you right now that um, um, I'm glad that you guys are watching this um, once again my name is ultimate one uh, the chokeslam wrestling report is what you listen to right now I'm coming to you from live from New York City at this time and I have my YouTube channel which is called Ultimate One Wrestling News. That it's coming through live also. I have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the same name, Ultimate One Wrestling News. I also have a audio podcast through Apple Podcasts or iTunes Store called the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. So I'm all over the place trying to get much wrestling to all you fans who probably don't have a chance to 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 check out things that are going on um, behind the scenes and all the stuff and so that's why I'm here. I'm here to give you my opinion. My, you may not agree with it. Some of you will. If you don't, hey, life goes on, right? So, um, but I want to thank everybody for the uh, the opportunity. And once again, I thank you. I hope to see y'all next week.